every explorer knows where this is. This is the courtyard of the National Geographic Society in Washington, D.C. In this blog, I want to talk about how you get started as an explorer. This is going to be Exploration 101. How do young people get their first step on that ladder to going out and discovering the amazing things about our planet? The question then is how do we get started in exploration? And no better person to answer that question than Dr. Luke Dollar, who is a National Geographic Society emerging explorer. Luke, tell us how you first got started. I got my first opportunity uh, about 15 years ago, following three years of scooping lemur poo uh, at uh, the Duke Lemur Center. Uh, after three years of that and spending uh, two of those three years doing absolutely everything I possibly could to ingratiate myself to the faculty member who first took me to Madagascar. She took me to Madagascar, and what I was doing in Madagascar that first year was the metaphorical equivalent of scooping lemur poop. Madagascar had always been one of those exciting, fascinating, mysterious places of the world, and so when Stuart said, do you want to go, my answer was yes. I mean, before even thinking about anything else, yes, I want to go. Um, and that's how it started, I guess. That's how I started working with Stuart's lab. When the chance came up to go to the Amazon, I mean, like, there you go, bing! Madagascar, another big Amazon, you know, two of the greatest places on earth, so how could I say no? Tell me what was bad about Ecuador, tell me what was great about Ecuador. I mean, what are, what are the high points, what are the low points? Okay, um, the high points would be um, my understanding of science. To do greater, better, more interesting things, your projects need to become multidimensional. You know, you, you can't, if you want to study the wildlife in the middle of the Amazon, you have to learn about the people who live next to it. You have to learn about the culture, the languages, and on a more elemental level, you have to learn how to survive in those areas, how to, how to camp, how to, how to purify your own water. All those were things I didn't know before starting to do field research in this lab. What were the bad things? Okay. <laughs> is a relative word for challenging part I guess would be the food um, as you might know people of the rainforest do have a very varied diet um, and it includes game animals we normally wouldn't use for meat uh, like monkey and um, any type of fish encountered uh, really any any type of rodent um, and growing up in a Hindu family we didn't really eat meat in the house so going from no meat to a little bit of strange meats in Madagascar and then full-on monkey meat in, in, in Ecuador. That was, that was hard. <laughs> More basic, the language was, was, a huge, um, was a huge stumbling block for me because I went to Ecuador, which is something that people would say don't do. I went to Ecuador not speaking Spanish and not speaking the tribal language of the people I worked with. But that was a really great opportunity in, in, in retrospect. It was difficult and painful and um, humiliating. <laughs> so, please, tell me how you got started. I, I understand your parents had something to do with it. Yeah, ever since I was a really little girl, my parents would, actually ever since I could was large enough that they could really strap onto their body and take me backpacking with them, I've been going and traveling around South America. I realized I was really addicted. I, uh, I had to be able to go out and be in a place where I was speaking a different language or I was just completely away from people in general and um, and I, I guess it also kind of created that little crazy side to me. Uh, so we're rushing out from the the hotel to get to our to the bus station and I'm in the front with this bag of all our GPS's and we're rushing and I, I get out of the bus, the, the I mean get out of the taxi and leave the GPS's in the taxi uh, and we hadn't paid attention to the number of the taxi, didn't, it's pretty frantic, those were I mean, we had about five GPSs, well, three of which didn't really work in the jungle, but two of which were pretty expensive, um, and our entire project relied on them. So after about three hours of going, contacting the, the hotel that we were in before and, and asked us for the, you know, who had called for the taxi, going to the police station, this is at night in Coco, which is kind of a scary place. Um, we finally, the, the taxi company finally confirmed that there was a taxi who had a black bag in his in his taxi and he was 
going off in a long, uh, he had a long trip that he was work taking someone to, but that he'd get in touch with us at six in the morning the next day and bring us the, bring us the GPSs. And we were really lucky that um, it actually worked out. So eight in the morning got on bus to Puyo um, and that's really when it all started. Um, we, uh, we worked with, uh, with Tagaka, which is a community member of a community called Daimontaro. We bought all our provisions and the, actually I think it was within a day, we had a, one day of buying provisions and coordinating logistics and then we head out the next day uh, to his community. And um, that was one of the greatest experiences I think Varsha, Nicole or I, I had the entire summer. Um, it was a really beautiful community. The whole, everyone was on board and interested in working on the project. We pretty much worked with every family there. I learned a lot of lessons on that first trip. Good lessons, what you expect is going to be wonderful, probably will be, but some of the most amazing experiences that you have may be things that you had no idea were coming. Keep your mind open, keep your eyes open, and keep your, um, I guess in, in the, the South we'd say, keep your powder dry, be ready for anything, because uh, what happened to me in that first field experience was I was there studying lemurs, and this predator ate the lemur, and I was thinking about this, and that became the focus of the rest of my career, that predator. Don't pigeonhole yourself into a single track of development or pursuit because you may miss a very exciting turnoff that may put you on an interstate to success. Luke, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.